Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Extreme Performance Series video blogs. With me today, I have another one of my performance engineering peers, Karthik, uh, talking about a very cool area that, you know, we've been releasing some information about for the last while, but the, the idea of DPUs and offloading uh, some of our processes to that. So, uh, Karthik, first of all, why don't you give yourself an introduction? Sure, Mark. Thanks for having me over here. So, um, I'm Karthik Denison. I uh, work on the performance of uh, DPUs, or what we call Project Monterey. Well, that's awesome. I think what's interesting about this space is um, while we continue to grow it and develop in there, obviously, I think the interesting part is the performance. What is it doing for us? And so we're very excited to see what you have to share with us today. This was, you know, a joint uh, collaborative work done with uh, BWI GmbH um, and uh, NVIDIA. So um, we recently published a white paper on this, and I'm going to highlight you know, a few areas in the white paper that, uh, that I think is you know, quite interesting. Um, in the in the last part of this uh, extreme performance series, we talked about you know um, the DPU architecture and how we get to offload tasks like you know the networking tasks uh, and stuff like that to the DPU. Basically, the infra infrastructure tasks to the DPU, and you know you get the host or the hypervisor on the host uh, to you know run the applications you know without any interference from these uh, infrastructure tasks. Right. And in that previous one, we focused on, you know, mainly the networking uh, tasks, like switching, routing kind of stuff. But um, today, I know I'm going to focus more on security tasks like firewall. Right? Typically, security tasks, um, you know, security and performance at many times are at loggerheads, right? Like, you you know, when you turn on security features, there is always this concern that, you know, is that going to take my performance down? And, you know, should I really be turning it on or not, right? So by offloading these security tasks also to the DPU, you know, hopefully we can, you know, um, we can have, you know, both um, security and performance at the same time. So that's, you know, that's the idea that we are, you know, um, exploring here today. So to, you know, before we get into the details, let me quickly go over the use case that we are targeting here. You know, BWI is the uh, IT system house of the German military. The security domain here on the left are these uh, different rows represent, you know, um, the different security requirements for the data. Right? Like data could be public, classified, you know, it, it could go from, you know, secret to top secret. Right? On the, uh, in the columns here is the information space that is, you know, the sovereignty of the different tenants, you know, that are going to be using um, this private cloud um, that BWI is putting together. And each of these you know, different classifications in this control matrix has to be implemented as dedicated infrastructures, right? So, and, you know, how to go about, you know, uh, doing that uh, without impacting performance, you know, um, that's a major challenge, right? And this is where, you know, we are looking at DPUs to see if that can help us. So, in addition to hardware-based, um, you know, zone segmentation, uh, VCF with NSX also provides the ability to do uh, micro segmentation. That is, you can create, you know, NSX segments and you know guarantee isolation using um, using various firewall rules. Right? Um, and in this case, um, you know, those firewall rules can be a lot. Like you could have like thousands of firewall rules. Right? And you know what will happen to performance um, with so many firewall rules? And can the DPU you know help in this case? Right? So that's uh, that's the thinking, and in this case, like you know, you have um, all these different um, tiers in in the application. Really, you could have your back end, the application servers, front end, and the end user, and each of these you know uh, different network segments that we put together, you know, take take care of each of these different uh, tiers, and they might have these firewall rules to make sure you know only the right traffic goes through. We were thinking, you know, we were doing a POC, um, right? And part of this POC, we vary the number of firewall rules in layer three, four, and layer seven from, you know, thousand to about four thousand rules. And uh, at the same time, you know, we study it for different cases. For example, we study it with no firewall, and we study it with uh, NSX distributed firewall with only the default rule, which is the second row here. And you know, similarly. Uh, each of these uh, labels here represent the number of rules implemented in these different layers. So in terms of, you know, the experiment itself, we try to keep it as simple as possible. So we just have, you know, 
Uh, we're going to use this uh, open source workflow called IPOF3 and um, we're going to have um, about 50 parallel streams of um, you know uh, IPOF data flowing between VMs and these VMs are placed on different hosts and all this traffic is going to go through you know the next and we use both uh, a regular NIC and uh, a Bluefield a Bluefield 2 DPU to study, uh, you know, how each of those performance um, aspects vary between these different cases. I think that's really interesting, Karthik, because when you think about it, there's certainly a high requirement. Yeah, the firewall rule count would grow exponentially very quickly as we talk about the micro segmentation there. And I would think, you know, based off of a history, we certainly see, you know, performance implications of that even in bare metal environments um, in that kind of scenario. So very excited to see what the numbers look like. Basically for this chart, you know, the way access here is the gigabits per second that is, you know, received by the receiver. And these X axis here represents different use cases. Like I mentioned before, the no firewall is like without is the, the firewall completely turned off and then it is the firewall with the default rules. And each of this with you know the firewall rules varying from thousand to four thousand, um, you know, for different layers of um, where the firewall rules are implemented. And here the the light gray refers to regular NIC using the standard data path, and um, the darker gray here um, ref, uh, you know represents regular NIC, uh, but it uses the NSX enhanced data path, which is you know which provides better performance generally uh, for NFV kind of workloads. These two, the the dark gray, the darkest gray here refers to you know DPU performance in the default mode, and the green refers to the DPU performance in full acceleration mode, or what we call the UPT um, or the pass through mode uh, for the DPU. Now high is better for this chart. So DPU you can see you know it outperforms both the baseline cases and achieves you know close to line rate for pretty much most of these cases. It it really doesn't change a change a whole lot when you you know add a add a lot of rules here. Like for example, going from you know thousand to four thousand really doesn't change in the way the the distributed firewall works. Is it builds a lookup tree and it tries to optimize the lookup tree in such a way that the number of lookups you know will not be significantly higher just because you have you know a lot of lot more rules. This is you know the overall uh, performance we see, and you can see the significant improvement that the DPU gives in, in, in both the de default and the UPT modes. While, while offloading all these tasks, right, you, you move these tasks from you know, the host, that is infra infrastructure tasks uh, from the host, like network processing, security processing to the DPU, what that provides is you know, your applications that are running on the host cores, they don't get interfered because of these network tasks. right? And similarly, just because your application processing has a, let's say it has a surge or, you know, there is a sudden CPU utilization surge, you know, that doesn't affect the quality of service that the network tasks can provide, right? Mm -hmm. Because of this isolation that comes from offloading them to the lead people, right? So to be able to study that, what we did was like, you know, we put um, a CPU hog kind of a application on the host to see how that is going to affect, you know, the network performance. So this chart, you know, shows the same throughput that we saw on the previous chart, but this one has a concurrent CPU load on the host. They all, you know, go down to some extent because, you know, because of this concurrent CPU load. So, you know, the DPU, especially in the full acceleration mode, you know, it really doesn't use much CPU on the host. So when you have a CPU load or a, you know, a surge on the host, that doesn't affect the performance of this green bar much at all. The default mode, on the other hand, it has it also offloads a significant portion of processing from the host side to the DPU, but it still has some processing going on on the host side that can potentially get slowed down because there is concurrent CPU load on the host. So you know you can see you know this is still competitive, but uh, to you know the DPU full acceleration mode, but it still gets affected by the CPU load. But as the regular NIC cases, they are the ones that get slowed down the most because of this concurrent CPU load uh, on the host. And this is the last chart. The y-axis here is the normalized host cores used uh, per GB of network data that is being transmitted on the C. Right. 
it's all normalized to you know the regular next standard data path pace so you can see that you know at the 100 percent here so with respect to this one you know one can see how when you go from the no firewall case to you know with the firewall case there is you know a significant increase in uh in the cpu load for every gb of uh, network processing um for these regular NIC cases so on the other hand if you look at you know the dpu uh the dpu in the full acceleration mode badly uses any cpu on the host it, that doesn't change much at all whether you have firewalling or not because most of the firewalling overhead is all taken on by the dpu instead of you know uh, having some load on the host going on the dpu can like completely hide you know all your security processing overheads like firewalling and you know really make sure you you can you know consolidate more of your applications on the host by freeing up these cores on the host and these applications have better quality of service because you know your caches don't get polluted by these network or, or the security processing tasks that run, that can run concurrently on the host for a case like a regular net. So you know this is, I believe, is one of the biggest value adds from the DPU and all the isolation you get by you know moving these infra infrastructure tasks to the DPU. Well, and I think you hit on something that's really important here is. You know, we've talked a lot about the fact that we need some amount of host processing for all of these things, the vSANs, the NXX and stuff like that. But we start to see it adds up quite quickly when we're talking about cores, you know, for gigabit pipes. And as we start to see bandwidth scale, that, that's a lot of compute that the application stacks are getting back. And then the second piece you hit there was the fact that it is more efficient because we're not scheduling our worlds. We're not doing that processing work there is a lot less scheduling switching that's going on. And like you said, cache pollution and things like that. So it's a double benefit besides offloading what we're trying to do uh, with the security stack and getting that all back in a very efficient form for the applications. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And, you know, with this roadmap, like, like we can we can put more of these, you know, move more of these infrastructure uh, tasks into into the DPUs, you know, and that way we have, you know, we have better isolation for the applications going on. Okay, so, so in summary, right, like uh, from these results, we see that we are able to achieve close to line grade network throughput, even when you had like, you know, an overlay based micro segmentation and thousands of firewall rules are being implemented uh, by the distributed firewall in this case, right? And you get to isolate network and security processing from applications by offloading to the smart net. And by doing that, you get to free up post codes to enable higher application workload scale. And this isolation brings less interference for both these infrastructure tasks like, you know, network processing and security tasks. And at the same time for the apps because of this, you know, isolation uh, by offloading to the DPU. And, you know, if you're curious about more details, you know, uh, this, uh, this is the white paper from which most of this data that I talked about comes from, you know, please uh, go ahead and uh, look at that. Well, great. Thank you, Karthik, for sharing that collaboration. It's certainly exciting to see how far we've come with Project Monterey as we, uh, you know, offload more of these things to DPU. The performance, I think, is critical for our customers. So thank you for bringing those data points for us here today. I uh, really appreciate you being here. Thanks, Mark. Well, thanks, everybody. I uh, look forward to joining you again shortly with a new Extreme Performance Series video blog. Thank you.